Uh, this section is titled Parting the Clouds GE on Google Cloud Platform. And um, it is a bit of a, a demonstration on um, running running GE in Google Cloud Platform so that they can really work hand in hand. And the real uh, star of this section is the deployment guide doc, uh, which we can find in Docs Great Expectations deployment guides. And this has been uh, live for a couple of weeks now, and we don't have time to go through the whole guide, but wanted to give you a short demonstration on what that looks like, uh, particularly the functionality around the actual migration to Google Cloud, as well as testing and additional resources. So a bit of background on where this guide came from and how this uh, deployment guide came to be. Well, we had a set of user interviews late 2021, which uh, some of you may have participated in. And uh, one of the things that we learned from our users during that time was that many users were interested in using great expectations with the Google Cloud Platform. And one question that kept coming up was, it wasn't really clear how to take GE into production. Uh, many were starting off with like a small, a small like proof of concept uh, of a local deployment using CLI. And it really wasn't clear uh, what the pieces needed to be in place, as well as best practices, in order to take this sort of local configuration that ran really well on my machine and then have it really run really well in Google Cloud. So really, that's what this documentation was trying to capture, is to really define um, how we expect or imagine users to use GE well and the sort of pieces that we uh, would like them to have in order to make this process as, as smooth as possible. So the starting point of the guide is what you see here. And if you've gone through um, some of the, uh, the how-to guides, the getting started guides, uh, some of these pieces may already be pretty familiar. And so uh, where is GE? Uh, well, it's local in the CLI. Expectations, validations, data docs, which we call the metadata stores, all of that stored locally. And the data is in GCP or BigQuery. And there's guys that kind of help you get set up with that. But critically, because there's no, um, no Airflow, no Google Cloud Composer, there's no automated orchestration of the workflow, which we believe is the, the critical piece you need in order to take this proof of concept and take, turn it into production. And so that's what really this guide uh, helps you to do is take that starting point and then get to a finishing line where you have still your data is in, GCP or BigQuery, but GE is now running in Cloud Composer. All your metadata, expectations, validations, data docs are now in cloud storage. And because we are now in Cloud Composer, orchestration is now possible. And since there's a lot of moving pieces, what we really did is we split it up into two parts. So there's the starting point, there's an intermediate step where we have all of our metadata sort of moved over into the cloud. And then there was that last step that where you take GE and then you move it on to Google Cloud Composer. And that's what really enables this productionized uh, orchestration of, of, um, of GE and checkpoints. And so I think I might need to share the, the full screen. So could you hold on just a moment? Let's try this again. So here is, yes. So does everybody see my full screen? Okay. I, I see some nods. Okay, great. So the first thing we want to sort of highlight is sort of the, the intermediate starting point of uh, where this guide, uh, the second part of this guide begins. And so you'll see uh, this is our great expectations folder that we see locally. Um, and we have some data sources configured. So we have one pointing to GCS, one pointing to BigQuery. And critically, because we're in this intermediate step, all of our stores are now um, in uh, GCS. So we see uh, we have an expectation GCS store using the GCS store backend. We have some uh, projects, some buckets, same thing with validation and the uh, same thing with data docs. And so here we have GS site and um, the project and bucket defined here as well. And one other thing I wanted to highlight is we also have, um, some checkpoints, we're gonna be using the GCS checkpoint. And we uh, take those data sources, um, take a data asset that lives in GCS, and then we run that as a validation. And we have some, some actions that we take, storing the validation result, uh, updating the data docs, storing the evaluation parameters. And so now let's go to what we, um, how we actually move this into Google Cloud Composer. So the first thing I wanna, want us to look at 
is our here we are is our um, our account. So one thing we want to ensure is we want to ensure that our service account that we use for this has the appropriate uh, credentials. And this has gone into a little bit more detail in the uh, in the guide. But we want to have a set of BigQuery. If this is what you are using, we want a set of BigQuery um, privileges that this account has. We want to have a composer worker because we want to run all this in composer. Uh, writing logs and critically uh, storage object viewer and creator is necessary because we are sort of placing or creating objects like validation results and data docs into Google Cloud Storage. So we want our um, service account in order uh, to have those privileges. And now let's go to the environment. So here is when you create a um, Google Cloud Composer environment, and it's done. Uh, this is the step that it takes you in. So this takes a little bit of time. Um, I've used Composer version two using a lot of the default settings for a, a small environment. And um, after some time, you get this environment that we are able to migrate our things to. And one additional thing that I did was um, I installed GE. And so one of the things you can do when you when you click in uh, one of the tabs is PyPy packages. And you can basically edit this list and then add a package and you add great expectations. Uh, this step also takes a little bit of time. So I also did this step uh, before this presentation. And so uh, the next thing we wanna do then is to sort of take our local GC, uh, group great expectations configuration and migrate it over into the Cloud Composer environment. And so how do we do that? Well, one of the tabs in our composer environment is environment configuration. And you'll see a list of sort of, uh, sort of things that we see here. And one of them is the DAGs folder. So the DAGs folder is created as sort of a resource when we create this new cloud composer environment. And it's where you see your DAGs. And we are given one um, kind of by default, which is airflow monitoring. And we're going to sort of be placing uh, our DAG over into this folder. But where do we move the great expectations configuration? Well, if we click one level up from the DAGs folder, so here it's US Central Demo Community. So this is the, uh, the bucket that's created automatically. We can see that there is these other resources that we see here, like data, logs, plugins. And this folder actually is accessible from each of the composer worker nodes uh, through a folder called GCS Fuse. And uh, this is where we want to be placing our, um, placing our great expectations folder. So let's first do that. We're going to, so this is the same folder that we see uh, the configurations in. And we're going to be dragging over the great expectations configuration that we saw here. And once this happens, see that this has now been created. And what we're gonna do next is move our DAGs over. And let's look a little bit more closely at the DAG. So here um, is a very simple DAG that we're gonna be moving over into. Let's actually do that first. Um, so we'll do the GCS one. And it, it's a DAG that contains one node and it uses a bash operator. And so the first thing we do is we CD into this GCS fuse, a directory that we explained before. And we go into the great expectations folder that we had just dragged over. And what's really nice about the bash operator is we can then just run uh, the bash command that we would use locally to run this checkpoint. So if we're doing the same thing and we're just doing it inside our Google Cloud Composer environment. And uh, the Cloud Composer environment. So the next thing that we would do is we go back to the environments, then we will be able to see the Airflow UI. And here we are. And now we will see our GE checkpoint run DAG that we just dragged in. And so what we're seeing here is what we see here on the left in the airflow environment. And we can do a, what we can do, we can run, trigger the DAG manually. 
and this will go. It'll take a little bit of time. But um, one thing I wanted to actually mention as well is the, the use of the bash operator. So those who are familiar with Airflow will realize that bash operator is probably one of the most simplest things you can do uh, with Airflow. There's um, Python operators, there's other operators that you can use. And the reason why we're using the bash operator in this example is we wanted to sort of set up the simplest starting point for this migration. Um, so here you can get something that's working, a real bare bones, uh, like sort of hello world situation. And the document of um, where th this is the, uh, the deployment guide at the bottom uh, will really kind of list uh, the different additional, more sophisticated things you can now do now that you've moved your configuration over to, uh, to Cloud Composer. And so one thing that um, I wanted to highlight is the Airflow, Great Expectations Airflow Operator, which we recommend as sort of the next step. And there's also um, additional resources on how we can now take this, uh, this uh, very simple DAG and maybe add some more sophisticated orchestration um, features as well. Here we are, oh, still going. So uh, one other thing I wanted to highlight is uh, one of the challenges when you're following a how-to guide online is context. So sometimes you'll have a situation where like maybe three lines of Python are shown and it's very hard to know how this fits into this larger picture, especially in a more complex um, sort of set of operations like great expectations. And so one of the things that we really made an effort to do is to make it sure, make it so that anything that we show here, like any code that we show, is also tested as part of our integration test. And uh, not only that, but to show those scripts to the users. So if we go all the way to the bottom, and a lot of the documentation actually has this, is we link to the script to test the great to the GCS configuration. And when we look here, we see all of sort of the, the guts of how this all works. So it's setting up the environment, loading up the great expectations context, loading in the, um, the GCS stores, replacing those things. And what this helps you do is it kind of helps you take those same steps uh, in your configuration and really understand how we get from step one to step two, step two to step three without any leaps in, um, leaps in logic or in explanation. And so we don't have time to go into all the detail here, but really wanted to highlight that this is uh, one thing that we're really trying to, to present to users. So let's go back to see if our, yep, okay, still going. Okay, so one, um... no, okay, so now we have success. So, so we have this uh, checkpoint that is now ran. And what we'll be able to see now is we can see a, um, if we go into our buckets, we'll be able to see our validation result, which just ran. We did the GCS suite. So we see that this just ran today. And then we'll also see a new data docs. So also see a new data docs as well. So, so this will, so also see a new data docs that we, we see here. And so um, really that's kind of that first step and uh, wanted to, um, that's really where we get by at the, at the end of this guide. And so uh, this really is um, something that we are, are pushing for other uh, cloud platforms as well. So uh, please, we'd love any feedback or any questions. Um, I'll be available and most of the team is available to help you. So thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Will. Um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, we have a few minutes um, till Fabiana takes over. Uh, otherwise, or people can post uh, questions in chat and Will, you can, you can keep, uh, keep eyes on on chat. Uh, if anyone wants to just ask a quick one now, you can go for it. I think so. I, I think one of the question was the AWS ecosystem. 
So the deployment method, is it easily replicated? Um, yes, with a caveat, I think. So a lot of the components that we have um, here in AWS, like the, in GCS, the equivalent components do exist in AWS. But as you know, um, we did find a lot of, we did find some places where um, that whole process could use a bit more polishing as we were writing this. And so um, as part of the effort of writing the deployment guide, we will likely uh, come up with some things that make the process a little bit sooner. But the larger answer, uh, does the functionality also work in AWS? Uh, it, is, uh, it is a yes. Uh, 